Welcome to SVU Pod, especially heinous. I'm Gabe. I'm Tasha. We are on season four, episode 15, Pandora. This will be my last episode. <laughs> yeah, this is a pretty... that The ending monologue the guy had, I was like, are we still... D-? I know. Ugh. Yeah, like, let's do it. But like the chaser is one that... I'll put the trigger warnings up top. It's fucking brutal. If I didn't do the research myself, I would not listen to it. Hmm. I would. Mm-hmm. I Well, I know. Opening scene. There's this couple on the side of the road. They're fucking arguing because she forgot his cell phone. He ran out of gas. He's like, you always forget your cell phone. And she's like, you always forget to get gas. And he's like, the gauge is broken. But they're just like stupid SVU. You yeah, know. right. She walks over to this car. and He's like, where are you going? And she's like, I'm going to see if they have a cell phone. In New York City, in the dark, <laughs> with the window rolled down, she walks over, sticks her entire half of her body inside of the car she keeps it in there for a really long time like a really long time before popping out and saying there's nobody in there like honey you just put your head in a four-door sedan it's not a fucking dave and busters like how how long did you have to spend with your head in there trying to figure out if it was clear or not right right i mean you can see through the the windows i mean one with your eyeballs three four yeah nobody's in here it is a small space (laughs) yeah so they're like well we better get walking and then they start hearing all this bumping around in the trunk and they open it and there's a woman inside she's crying and she has blood on her clothes and her mouth is glued shut She's like, mm. yeah. Now Benson and Stabler are on the scene with a patrol officer who tells them that the woman is alive and she's awake. She was beaten and raped with a tire iron, Ugh. which is awful. So they go over to talk to this paramedic too, and he talks exactly like Steve-O. Oh my God. Right? I remember, I do remember the paramedic because I was like, God, he, there was like something about him. And I think that's, that's probably what that was. Yeah. He's like, the victim's mouth was glued shut. She can't tell anyone what <laughs> happened until they get to the ER and dissolve the glue. I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to staple my nuts to the pavement. <laughs> I can't I can't do a steve Of course, Benson decides to ride with the victim in the ambulance in case mm-hmm. something happens and she can say stuff. Stabler walks away with a patrol cop. There's no ID for the victim, but the car was registered to a Meredith McGrath. It looks like there's some recent bumper damage. Benson thinks that the suspect ran into her car, and then when she pulled over, he attacked her. Some other cops come over. They found a wallet in the trash. There's no IDs or keys to the car, but still has $80 cash in there Mm -hmm. and her credit cards. Like, she wasn't robbed. And then Stabler's like, oh, my God, he knows where she lives. He has her ID. Oh, shit. Yeah. Now we're at Meredith's house. The cops are there. Stabler walks in and meets with the cops. So they say that the cops were called because the neighbors heard a commotion. But when they got there, a dude was already dead. So there's a guy in the ground at the crime scene. He's got markers around him. There's blood pooling. It looks like he was hit over the head with some sort of house decoration. Mm -hmm. It was a gather sign from the kitchen. (laughs) It was live, laugh, bleed on the floor. (laughs) Sorry. So there's a homicide detective, Sam Bishop. He's Mm -hmm. there. I don't like him. Okay. He's a terrible actor. He... Is it just me? God, I spent so much time analyzing him. He's really trying to do the, like, broody, like, tough cop thing, but he is failing miserably. Okay. This dude has 134 acting credits, and I bet not one character of a movie that you've ever heard of. He's got legit 14 things in various stages of pre-production, post-production, filming. He is fucking busy. Mm -hmm. Some of my favorite titles of things that he's been in, Raunch and Roll, The Wrong Stepfather, The Wrong Student, The Wrong Roommate. He's been in all of the wrongs. What? Uh, he's been in a thing called My Stepbrother is a Vampire! Exclamation point, question mark, exclamation point. Literally the title with all of those marks. <laughs> to me, he looks like Liz Lemon's hot dog boyfriend mixed with the villain dad from Kindergarten Cop. Oh, my God. Mm. Oh, my God. <laughs> and he like always looks a tiny bit damp. Yes. Right? Oh, my God, Tasha. Yes. Doesn't he look he a, looks little, a little moist? Just yeah. a little moist. <laughs> Oh. oh my God, somebody get makeup in here. Or is this intentional? Yeah. My passion for my job comes through my pores. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really like him either. Yeah. So he's talking with Stabler. The dead guy in the house is Roger McGrath, obviously Meredith's husband. They think he surprised the perp when he broke into the house. And then Bishop makes some stupid joke. He's like, I don't think he was raped. Why the fuck are you here? <laughs> yeah. And Stabler's like, well, his wife was, you fucking prick. Their relationship through this entire episode is interesting, Weird. to say the least. Yeah. Stabler tells him that he thinks that the perp stole the keys and broke in looking for something. And then Bishop's like, oh, my God, there's a fucking computer with a hard drive 
stripe just ripped out of it, but nothing else was taken or damaged. Even a laptop and some CDs were left behind. And then Bishop's like, I'm going to go through all that shit. So Stabler's like, okay, dude, how are we going to do this? How are we going to work this case? And then Bishop's like, well, just I'll call you if I need help. Okay. Yeah. And I'm like, that's not how this works, fucking hot dog. (laughs) Then Stabler's phone rings. Oh my God. Meredith died. Theme song. In the precinct, uh, Stabler walks into the squad room. Craggan lets him know that Benson's not back from the hospital yet because she received a child abuse case while she was there. Stabler lets Craggan know that the witnesses only heard like the commotion of fight in Meredith's house. In Meredith's house. I cannot say Meredith's. I'll just say that part. You say the sentence and then I'll just say that part. <laughs> Stabler tells Craigan that witnesses only heard a fight in Meredith's house. The prints found in the home match prints found on Meredith's car. I did it. Okay. Okay. We're not doing it. I was ready. <laughs> I know. I saw you were like, <laughs> uh, Munch ran the prints through the system and he got nothing. And then Stabler's like, I wonder why her fucking mouth was glued shut. Daddy Craigan's like, to send a message. She talked when she shouldn't have. So there's no update yet on the laptop. And Munch is like, we're never going to get shit from Bishop. He'll close the case and not say shit. And then Craigan's like, okay, guys, here's the plan. Like, we have to just keep going with our victim, Meredith. So they're going to go check with Meredith's workplace since she was coming home from work when she was attacked. How fucked up that these cops don't want to work with each other. They're like, well, Bishop's not going to help us. Really? Because you could solve it easier if if you work together. Yeah, it's like something we teach preschoolers. Like this is it's my caller, my fuck. It's like, isn't this about like solving crimes and helping people? No, No, it's about our egos, Gabe. Yeah. Yeah. In the New York Public Library, Stabler, Munch and Meredith's boss in a hand knitted sweater vest are doing a library walk and talk. Everyone loved (laughs) Meredith. The detectives ask if Meredith had an affair. And he's like, um, most of the employees here are women and she didn't seem gay. Okay. (laughs) And the dudes here are fucking dudderinos and there's no way that she's going to fuck any of them. (laughs) Yeah. I loved how fucking shady he was. He was like, like, um, the men here, I don't think she would risk her marriage for any of them. (laughs) (laughs) Like you are a shady bitch Yeah, in the best way. But I didn't like the gay thing where he's like she didn't just seem gay okay right meredith also hadn't gotten a promotion office or anything else at work that would make anybody jealous he also says that he almost had to fire her a few months ago due to performance issues she was distracted she took a lot of sick and vacation time then she was just back to normal he's like i don't know what was going on with her but she changed her email address seven or eight times within the last year maybe she had a stalker or something so munch wants to look at her work computer but this guy says that she didn't have a work computer she only used her laptop. Mm-hmm. So they got to get a hold of that. And Bishop has that, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Stabler walks into Detective Bishop's office and says that he needs the report from the lab. Bishop says that he doesn't have the report yet, but he does let Stabler see what was on the CDs that were found with it. Child sex abuse material. Of course. And Stabes is like, cool. When were you going to get around telling me that? Like, that's an Mm -hmm. SVU situation, you dick. Bishop, who's mid-angry putting on a trench coat, says, I got a report to you. My victim's a pervert. And Stabler's like, oh, my God. His wife is my Vic, and the CDs Mm -hmm. are hers. So, yeah. And Bishop's like, well, how do you know? There were no prints on them. And Stabler's like, listen, Linda. Linda, listen. (laughs) Linda. Linda. Oh, my God, Linda. (laughs) It was just so, ir- he was so irritating. He actually said, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. And I just pictured that little <laughs> fucking kid looking at his mom. He's like, okay, I'm thinking that she changed her email address so many times because she didn't want to get caught with this child sex abuse material. Mm-hmm. Stabler goes on to say that he thinks that their suspect was actually after Meredith and not Roger. Like Roger just got killed and had nothing to do with this shit. Yeah. And Meredith got fucking raped and tortured. Yes. And Bishop's like, if you guys want the perv crap, you can have it. And Stabler's like, yeah, we do. It's literally my job. That's what we do. (laughs) As sexual victims. That's the reason I came here. I came here for those things. And he's like, oh, my God, no. But I need them for my job. Fine, if you want them. He's like, okay, we're we're yelling. We're up here. But this is this is going the way I need it to go. (laughs) Yes. So now we're at the technical assistant response unit. Taru. Is that how you say it? Yes. Okay, we got Tech Ruben, who I love. I've always loved this guy. 
is he new or he's he's been on this before, right? Yes, he is um, actor Joel De La Fuente, and he's a reoccurring character in 52 episodes. He also played a realtor in The Happening. <gasps> <gasps> Gabe loves Wait, that movie. What, tr- <laughs> what realtor? I don't know. Um, I just saw it on his credits and was like, oh. But yeah, they call him Taru so much because he's the technical assistance response unit technician so much that a lot of people think that that's his name. Somebody oh. posted about that, actually. I don't know if it was in the Facebook group or if they sent us a message Oh, yeah, I saw that where it was like... I'm today years old when I found out his name wasn't Taru or whatever. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah. So anyway, we call him that. Yeah. So he's rad. Uh, Stabler and Bishop walk in and he's like, oh, real pleasant work, detectives. Thanks for sharing. (laughs) He's. What do you think we're going to bring you? Yeah. He found 50. 50, Oh, my God. He he saw like a detective from SVU and a detective from Homicide. He's like, what the fuck are you guys going to show me? (laughs) Oh, my God. What are you going to show? He found 50 images of child sex abuse, but the computer has a virus, so he can't see everything. So Ruben, Taru Ruben. Should we just call him Taru or... Let's just I have, call, yeah. Oh, I like Ruben, though. Oh, let's call him fucking Ruben Taru Sandwich. I don't care. <laughs> Do you want to call him Ruben? So Ruben shows Bishop and Stabler images of two girls. One is like eight or nine. The other one is about 14 or 15. Stabler tells Bishop that all the child abuse images are always sent to the FBI so they can use facial recognition to ID the kids and compare it to data from the Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Right. Ruben tells them that Meredith was sent the images via email using an anonymous server. And she saved all the emails and photos sent by Nick Too Shy. Nick Too Shy at wiremail.biz. <laughs> but Ruben's like, nothing online is actually anonymous. Every email, every website, everything mm-hmm. you fucking do has a trail. Yes. He was able to get the IP address to the computer that Nick Tushai used to send the images. It's at a local college. They need to get a subpoena to get computer user info. Meredith also saved a ton of internet chats about finding more child sex abuse images. Ruben said he tried to read through them all, but stopped when he started to feel like he was going to barf. Mm. Now we're at the precinct. Stabler's on the phone with his desk, and Bishop is like sitting on Benson's desk. He sees a picture of Benson and he's like, Whoa, this is your partner? Does she date? Which is a weird thing to say. Um, I think he was like trying to feel it out. And yeah. St- Stabler's like, Yeah, a lot of guys. <laughs> where is she, by the way? She wasn't in this at all. They said where she was. She was, uh, she got another case. There was like some other oh, child yeah, abuse thing. They prefaced it because they knew that that would be a shadow over the entire episode that we didn't have Benson here. Right. Really, her and Trevor Lang and IRL are on their real first date. Oh, my God. She's like, sorry, Dick Wolf. I'm not coming in today. I was too busy getting dick wolfed. <laughs> I was busy wolfing that dick. <laughs> so Stabler gets off the phone with the college. Arr! But there is... <laughs> Stabler gets off the phone with the college. There is no record of anyone using the IP address. So they must have used like a remote site and bypassed the login code. Whatever the fuck that means. The computer and stuff is super old. So this Nick Too Shy guy went through a bunch of shit to keep his ID secret. Yeah. And then Bishop's like, well, if Nick Too Shy killed Meredith, didn't he kind of do us a favor? Because she was doing a lot of gross shit on the internet. One of the internet chats she did was offering her child to a guy in exchange for more child sex abuse images. And mm-hmm. then Sailor's like, well, she didn't have a son. And Bishop's like, well, she told the guy she did. And then Sailor's like, I don't understand why she's doing all this lying. Like, she's also pretending to be 13. She also saves all of the info on the perps. And she also never offers anything unless she's asked. And then Sailor's like, this is very similar to how the feds do pedo online sting sting operations. operations. Yeah. Yeah. And then Bishop's like, oh, my God, Meredith's a fucking informant. (gasps) (sighs) Which is like, I'm like, (gasps) I know. I know. <laughs> I was so relieved. I'm like, oh my God, I can reestablish that relationship I had with Meredith. <laughs> well. Bishop and Stabler are doing a walk and talk with fucking Ruben. Ruben's like, this totally makes sense that Meredith's an informant. What he thought was a virus on her computer was actually a Trojan horse, which is a program hiding in a file that was designed to record every keystroke on Meredith's computer and transmit the info into an email to Nick Tushai. Whenever I hear hear Trojan horse, like I, in my mind, for whatever it's applying to, like Mm -hmm. I imagine like a little miniature actual Trojan horse inside of a computer with a little Mm -hmm. bitty like people coming out with 
They're all like piling out and there's little wooden wheels on the bottom of it. Yeah, in this like in the computer. They're like, hey, we have a present for you. <laughs> So Stabler thinks that Nick Tushai may have found out Meredith was an informant and killed her, Mm -hmm. then stole the evidence she had been collecting. Ruben says that Meredith sent a lot of the info to a .gov address for someone named Claudia Williams. (gasps) Obviously, Stabler stops in his tracks because we know Claudia. She didn't work for the FBI. She is the assistant U.S. attorney. It's fucking Foxy Brown, Jackie Brown, Claudia Williams, Mm -hmm. Pam Greer. Yes. Woo. I can't believe she's even talking to them. <laughs> like, <laughs> after last time, when she yeah. like, walked away pretty much like, fuck you. you He's guys like, let us awful. know if you need anything. <laughs> so now we're in the office of Claudia Williams. Stabler's kind of giving her shit for not telling SVU quickly. I don't know. But she's like, dude, I was going to tell you, but we just had to have something to give you. Also, remember the last time we fucking <laughs> spoke. <laughs> Stabler's pissed because Meredith was a civilian and thinks that they got her to do her dirty work and then she got killed. And they're like, dude, she's been doing this before we even got to her. Mm -hmm. She came to us. She considered herself a cyber vigilante. And they're like, well, why would she she do that? And she's like, I don't fucking know. Maybe she was abused. I I have no idea why she's doing it. That's not the point. Like, she came to us. We weren't fucking, you know. Mm -hmm. And since then, she's helped them put away five pedophiles in the last year. She also wants to find out who killed Meredith. Just as bad as they do. She said. And then Stabler's like, well, I want all the files through all the perps she helped put away. And she's like, yeah. Yeah. He's at like an 8.5 and we need him at a three. Yeah. Like she's giving yeah. you everything you want and you're like, well, okay. She's like, yeah. Great. So Claudia shows him a file that has a picture of the older girl from the images on Meredith's computer. The girl's name is Mia Van Wagner. She's from Queens and has been missing for two weeks. FBI was able to ID her from a match with the facial recognition shit. Mm-hmm. Photos of Mia didn't show up on the internet until after she went missing so it's possible that meredith found out mia was kidnapped and that's why she was murdered yeah we're in the precinct now and daddy Cragen and baby boy staves are chatting it up <laughs> stabler's like the precinct that investigated mia's missing persons case wrote her off as a runaway because she just took a few of her things and stole a couple hundred bucks from her mom before she took off just then bishop gets off the elevator as Cragen's getting into the elevator and Cragen dad jokes at bishop and he's like hey bishy boy you come around much more and i'll have to claim you as a dependent you know if you don't know there's a trampoline in the room you won't dust the <laughs> <laughs> You want, you want to work for SVU or what? <laughs> oh, that was awesome. <laughs> that was such a good callback. <laughs> and uh, Bishop's <sighs> like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I like my victims dead. Okay. Yeah. And Craig's like, don't worry. They die a lot too. No, he... So Bishop's... <laughs> Craigan goes down the elevator. He's done. He's satisfied with his little interaction. Bishop gets off the elevator and hands Stabler a coffee. And Stabes stares at the coffee like Bishop just handed him a fucking dildo and Barbie clothes. I'm guessing he's surprised that Bishop is being so nice. I think he was like, wait, this is a thing that Benson did. I don't, what? Yeah, like, we're not best friends. Why are you bringing me a coffee? And why is the cup red and not that blue? I, that was weird. Well, it's a homicide cup. Oh, Sure. <laughs> But I do think Stabler's surprised by how nice Bishop is being. But this is where I'm going to remind Stabler that not everybody's a steamy little fucking tea kettle. Right. She's like, we were mad at each other yesterday, so we're going to stay mad. Bishop tells Stabler that he found where Mia's mom works, which is at a restaurant in Queens. So now they're going to head over there together. Mm-hmm. At the Parkside Grill restaurant, um, the Swedish chef from the Muppets is in the background doing some paperwork. This guy had on the most straight. He's not, no part of the scene, but he has on the biggest chef's hat. I've ever I fucking did seen. not see that. He's wearing a cartoon chef's hat. It's an animated <laughs> chef's hat that they put in in post production. <laughs> He's got the big white gloves on. Too oh my nice. god. Mia's mom thinks that Mia was forced to run away. She says that she doesn't let Mia use the internet and Bishop lets her know about her photos that were online. She's like, I need to see those fucking pictures. And Stabler gets all parent to parent with her and goes, Mm -hmm. Mrs. Van Wagner, if it were my daughter, I wouldn't want those images in my head, which I'm not going to dog Stabes for the dadding this episode. I can't. Well, like, mm -mm. yeah. And the mom, is you can see on her face, she's like realizing what he's talking about. Yes. So she tells them that it's possible that Mia has access to the internet at her friend's house, Samantha Gilligan. This fucking... But the police have already talked to Sam. And I'm like, well, not these police. So Mm -hmm. off to Sam's house, they fucking go. In Samantha's room, this kid has a poster of a woman on it that says music across the top. (laughs) Oh my God. I literally (laughs) took that note. I was like... I was like, it, this, it reminded me of that shirt that 
when he was under- undercover cop, but he's obviously like instead of ACDC, it says music band or whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, the Steve Buscemi thing. Steve Buscemi. Yeah. I know. I saw it and it's I was like, my could, fellow teenagers, could you get a more generic fucking piece of background? You may as well use that fucking eight by 10 of Bill Clinton that you put in every fancy <laughs> library scene. You know what I mean? Right. It's like it's a picture of like a generic Annie DeFranco and it just says music in like a 90s font. <laughs> They're brainstorming in a fucking writer's room going, OK, we got to we got to put together this teens room. What do we got? Um, music. Kids like music. Cool. We don't have time to specify. <laughs> It didn't even have to say anything. I think it's a good band name, actually. Music. <laughs> yeah. Next up, music. <laughs> Put trans together for music. What do you listen to? Music. They're my favorite. <laughs> so Bishop and Staves are talking with Samantha. She says that Mia took off and hasn't called her at all. Stabler points out that Samantha doesn't seem worried enough about Mia for it to just be a dust in the wind ghosting situation. And mm-hmm. Samantha says that Mia can take care of herself. She's more mature than people think. Right. Okay. They keep questioning her and asks if the two girls would ever go online to pick up dudes. And Samantha's like, um, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> Bishop, is, is, she's not giving them information fast enough or enough at all. So Bishop gets upset and shows Samantha a picture of Mia. He shows a child a sex abuse image to a child to get her to talk and she gasps and freezes stabler does not like that tactic at all Mm -hmm. and tells bishop to put the photo away bishop's like somebody's doing that to your friend so if you know anything you got to tell us right now stabler's like fucking put it away like stands in between them right he gets between them to do like a good cop while bad cop bishop goes for a cute little spin around the room i took a video of it hang on let me send it to you (laughs) he stands up and he (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God, why is he like that? He's like, mm. So Samantha then admits that Mia had a boyfriend that she met online and that Mia had called her a few days after she left, but Mia didn't tell Samantha where she was at. Mm-hmm. Samantha's like, he wouldn't have done anything to Mia though. He loves Mia. I've seen romantic emails from him and they're all saved in my emails. Mm-hmm. So Stabes is like, cool, we're going to have to see those. Ugh, yeah. I can't imagine. And Bishop is this pouty little lawn gnome in the corner. <laughs> and I took a photo and I'm going to post it. I hate him so much. Oh my God, he is so pouty. <laughs> it's the most... Wow. All right, so out on the street, Bishop and Stabler are fucking doing a walk and talk. An angry little stamp and stamp. <laughs> Stabler fucking is pissed that Bishop showed Samantha the images. Yeah. And Bishop's like, it was the right thing to do. Samantha stopped lying to us as soon as... As soon as I traumatized her. As soon as I traumatized her, she stopped lying. And Stabler's like, you think terrorizing her is the right thing to do? And then like gets in his face. Stabler says, it's time for a spanking. And he tells Bishop, (laughs) I don't want you jumping in my game like that again. Are we clear? It's only going to get uglier from here on out. So if you can't handle it, you got to let me know right now. He was talking into his mouth. Yeah. Bishop's like. (laughs) Bishop's like, all right. Bishop's like, okay, let's uh, let's split this up. I'll handle the phone dumps. You handle the emails and then gets in his car like. (laughs) I just hate him. I just hate him. I hate him more and more. And then knowing that you also hate him makes me like hate him even more. I know we were supposed to like get to like it over time, but I'm just like, get out of the way. Mm -hmm. Stabler's in the fucking Taru lab with Ruben, who's working on the emails and the IP info. All of a sudden, Ruben's like, oh shit. And Stabler's like, what? Is it in a different fucking state? And he's like, dude, try country. It's in Prague in the Czech Republic. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Tasha loves that. I do love that. I'm Mm -hmm. Czech. I want to go to Prague so bad. Dude, when I was in Austria, I was like just a few hours away from Prague and I didn't go. Oh, it's it's one of the like handful of places that I'm like, I need to. I'd like to go everywhere. But that's one if somebody was like, hey, you can get on a plane tomorrow and go. It, it would be in my top five. Yeah. So now we're back in Claudia's office. All right. Mm-hmm. Claudia says that the U.S. Embassy in the Czech Republic confirmed the identity of the person who used the server. His name is Eric Tassig. He's this German guy who has been in Prague for like the last two years. The Czech authorities won't arrest Tassig for the emails. They need proof that he has Mia. Tassig hasn't left the Czech Republic in eight months, so Stabler thinks he convinced Mia to leave on her own. But Mia has never been issued a fucking passport. Stabler's like, I don't know what the fuck's going on, but I'm pretty sure she was fucking smuggled out of the U.S. 
Mm-hmm. And he, this dude is fucking throwing out child sex abuse material of her. But he's got to prove it. Claudia's like, do whatever you have to do. I'm going to make sure the fucking checks cooperate. Yeah. And they're down as shit to work with them. Mm-hmm. In the precinct, Stabler is whiteboarding this shit. Okay. So mm-hmm. Mia and Tassig had a relationship online for over a year. The other girl from the images has not been identified. She's younger. Craig is wondering if Tassig and Nick Two guy are the same person but Tassig writes like someone who doesn't speak English as their first language and Nick Tushai does so I could see someone being able to fuck around like that but yeah. right now they're thinking it's two separate people. Craigan goes okay so Nick Tushai helps get Mia out of the country and killed Meredith that's who that guy is. How does Nick Tushai know Tassig though and who and where is this other little girl? That's mm-hmm. when Bishop comes in and <laughs> This is where I I put that in my note. Bishop comes in. I can't put my finger on why, but he always looks like he's coming in from the rain to me. (laughs) Well, also, like, he wasn't in there before. All of a sudden, the camera turns and he's there with a file. And I was like, whoa. (laughs) Oh, okay, you're here. He's got the phone records from Samantha, and they show that Mia called her on a prepaid cell phone the day she went missing and hasn't called her since. That prepaid cell number also called a copy shop in the city. Stabes hops to it because he says that you can get passport photos taken at that shop. Mm-hmm. At Copy Pro Print Shop, Bishop and Stabler are showing Mia's photo to an employee. The employee goes, oh yeah, that's Carrie. I met her a few weeks ago when our boss Ron Crowley brought her in. He's in the back right now. So the detectives are like, cool, we're going to go talk to Ron. Could Ron look any more like Will Forte's Halloween sex offender sketch? Is that what? Did you think that too? Uh, yes. Oh my yes. God. The whole time, I'm just like watching him talk and I'm like, I'm a sex offender for Halloween. Yeah. I'm yeah. Jeff Montgomery. And I'm required by law to inform you that I'm a repeat sex offender and I'll be living in your neighborhood. Yes. Yep. It was, hey, don't call me a bitch. You're the bitch, bitch. What? <laughs> God, I love fucking Will Ford. Oh, my God. It's, it's so terrible. Now, could you sign this? This actor comes back two more times. He was also in The Sopranos, Obs. Ron confirms that he brought his daughter to work, but when he's shown the photo of Mia, he says that that's not his daughter. But it's a really strong resemblance. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Stabler's like, okay, um, let me see photos of your daughter then. You should have them because you're a dad. I always carry around photos of my kids because I'm a dad. Bullshit. I'll show you mine if you show me yours, he says. Ew. Ew. Bullshit. Ew. <laughs> you don't think Stabler has pictures of his 19 kids? I guess like you don't think he has one of those that. wallets that unfolds to the ground. I I guess I, I forgot that that was a thing then. Mm-hmm. Now you should have not one, but 2000 in your phone. Mm-hmm. So Ron doesn't immediately whip out an accordion of photos of his kids. And Bishop's like, Hah! and turns him around and grabs Ron's wallet out of his pocket. There is a photo of his family in there, but there, the little girl in it looks nothing like Mia. Out, like blonde hair. Mia has mm-hmm. black hair. It's no. Yeah. yeah. So they're like, you're coming with us. He's like, no. His little tiny little John Waters mustache. It's like. <laughs> quivering (laughs) in the interview room ron says that he's never seen mia before then when ron says he doesn't know why mia called the store three times bishop smokes him in the back of the head and he's like what the hell is your problem that's he literally talked like that like yeah your new york accent it was actually this cartoony new york accent is this guy he and his inflection he's yelling a lot and i liked it I just liked his choice, his acting choice. Stabler's mm-hmm. like, Detective Bishop here is very impatient. Now, mm-hmm. you can do yourself a big favor if you just answer our questions honestly. Mm-hmm. Stabes and Bishop, even though I love it right now, are not good for each other. Okay? Where yeah, but is Benson? I do like this. They're trying to make fucking Bishop seem like he's a tough cop, but like we've seen Stabler do a lot more and like he's not, they're not each other's match. Like Stabler's no. better and Stab- meaner. Right. Stabler's um, better at being a... Whatever. <laughs> Stabler's better at bad cop. Bishop's like, I'm mad. And Stabler's like, well, you better be careful because he's <laughs> fucking going to drip all over you. This guy. <laughs> so Ron says that he's never heard of Meredith. And Bishop's like, oh, yeah, well, you raped and murdered her. And Ron's like, you got the wrong guy. He <laughs> stands up and Bishop slams him back into the chair and gets in his face and grabs Ron's shirt and shakes the shit out of him. He goes, she found out about you, Ronnie. What a sick little worm you are. So you killed her. <laughs> 
And the whole time, Stabler is that gif of Robert Redford nodding in the 70s about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's like, yep. Mm-hmm. He's really proud of that Bishop. That's Robert Redford. It is Robert Redford. I never even noticed that. He looks hot. <laughs> the beard. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was 70s Robert Redford. So he was uh, early 70s Robert Redford. So... <laughs> Hello. Just then Claudia walks in and she's like, buddy, Bishop, you got to take a walk. And he's like, I want to stay. And Craigan's like, you have to go. Claudia then starts questioning Ron. Turns out Ron doesn't even have custody of his daughter. He says that he didn't try to get a passport for Carrie. But Claudia goes, well, I've got all of the paperwork here and it has a picture of Mia on it. Fraudulently obtaining a U.S. passport is a serious offense, Mr. Crowley. And if you think the NYPD was tough on you, just wait until you start dealing with the federal government. Ooh. Oh, I had such a Claudia boner. I know, I did too. And Ron's like, I didn't kidnap Mia. I got her the passport and helped her leave the country and that's it. He says that he doesn't know who the guy in Prague is, but Claudia says Customs is already searching his home and they know that he trades child sex abuse material with the dude in Prague. Mm-hmm. Ron's like, no, I was paid $5,000 to help the guy get Mia to Prague and she wanted to go. Stabler shows Ron a photo of the unidentified younger girl and Ron's like, I've never seen her either. And I don't know Meredith McGrath. I don't know anything. He's like, I didn't kidnap or kill anyone. I, I was helping. Is, is that, that a crime? crime? I'm like, yeah, yes. Everything 100%. that you did is a crime. All, All of it. the things you did, they're federal so crimes. So was your outfit, so was your mustache, so was your hair, <laughs> so was your whole existence. Like, piss off, Ron. Craig and Stabler are doing an outside the interview room walk and talk now. Craigan says that Ron's prints don't match the ones that they found at the Meredith or Roger murder crime scenes. Claudia then comes up and says, Stabes, how have you never had a passport, dude? And he's like, I've never needed one. Why? All of a sudden, 90s Oprah <laughs> runs in, fucking pie faces Claudia to the ground and yells in Stabler's face, because you're going to Prague! <laughs> you get a plane ticket and you get a plane ticket. Just kidding. Just Stabler gets a plane ticket. <laughs> Customs wants an SVU detective there when they pick up Mia and they decide it was fucking Stabes. Mm-hmm. What will Kath and the kids do without him? I don't know. What's going to happen? Is he going to tell oh. them? He has to be ready in two hours. He's like, honey, I got to go to Prague. She's like, whatever. I never see you anyways. Who cares? <laughs> so at the U.S. Embassy in Prague, Czech Republic, Stabler is greeted by Kate Logan. Who's a t- Total babe. Such a fucking babe, dude. Yeah. She's an officer with Europol. OMG, she is Tanya Asher. She's the Steel Dragon PR lady in the second worst Mark Wahlberg movie behind the happening, Rockstar. Do you ever see that movie, Rockstar? Oh, I did a long time ago. Oh. Yeah. So she greets Stabler and she's like, hey, uh, do you have any qualifications to be here at all? And he's like, no, but it's a change of scenery, which is fun. <laughs> As they continue their walk and talk, Kate tells him Europol and Interpol have suspected Tassig of trafficking girls from Eastern Europe to Germany and Austria. He fled to the Czech Republic two years ago. So now Tassig is this internet entrepreneur, which means that he's distributing child sex abuse material. Tasha's but doing like the hardest air quotes he, that's ever been air quoted. Yeah, he's making his work look legit to the naked eye on the internet. But really, this is he's doing this awful shit. Logan tells Stabes, last Last time he slipped through our fingers, it won't happen again. Yes. She's the Benson of Europol. Yes. Also, their walk and talk was up two flights of stairs, and not once did anyone sound winded at all. You know what's crazy is I thought that, too. I was like, <laughs> bitch, if that was me. I mean, I get... <laughs> I'm always like, you know how you do that thing when you're with somebody else and you're winded a little bit, but you don't want them to know and then it gets worse and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> because you're kind of like trying, trying to, to hold your breath. So you don't breathe hard, but you need to be breathing harder to actually catch it. Yeah. I chub yeah. clock that so hard. I'm just like, they're just walking up the stairs and she's like, yes, actually, I'm going to talk as if we're standing still. And I'm like, you bitch. <laughs> Stabler and Kate then go to meet with Mike Pearson, the U.S. attache. The case developed while Stabler was on his way to the Czech Republic. Tassig's apartment was raided the night before, but Tassig and Mia were not found. So obviously Tassig had been warned about the investigation by an email from Samantha fucking Mia's friend. Jesus. This is fucking stupid bitch. I know. They don't say anything, but I hope they fucking get her in trouble for that shit. That little fucker. Yeah. She needs to learn some kind of lesson for it. We're not trying to like punish kids or anything, but like she does need to learn. Well, there's like interfering with a fucking international investigation. Yeah. They've given the media a photo of Mia and the tip line goes to the Czech police. Stabes is like, aren't you guys worried he's going to leave the country? And Kate's like, Tasig won't try and leave. He's got too much of a reason to stay. Please excuse my accent. There's so many of them. 
them and mine are terrible. Tassig won't try and leave. He's got too much of a reason to stay. And Stabes is still confused and he goes, why if he's already got the girl? Cool ass Kate goes, I think you need a lesson on the child sex trade in the Czech Republic, detective. My question is, what did he do on the flight over there? Wouldn't that be the exact thing he would read up on on the flight? Yeah. I looked it up. The minimum flight time is almost 11 hours from JFK to Prague. The longest mm -hmm. was 24. It's 2003. There's no <laughs> Wi-Fi on the plane. The most they would do for in-flight entertainment is have fucking headphones that you plug into the armrest and a screen on the ceiling every five rows playing the fucking Matrix or some <laughs> shit. Why aren't you reading files on the way there, Sabler? Yeah. She should not have to go over the basics of child sex crimes. Yeah, because... Right? Yeah. In the beginning, she's like, you know, sorry, you don't have time to sleep. And he was like, oh, I'm here to work. And so he didn't sleep on the plane. Exactly. Yeah. You know I mean? He didn't sleep on the plane. That's the least you would do. It's like, here's the material to brief you on what's going on in the Czech Republic, the place that you're going. It yeah. doesn't. Uh, anyway. Did he just watch like sh she's all that four times <laughs> in a row? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, get it, girl. Get it. So. Cut to Kate Logan and Stabes walking and talking on the streets of the Czech Republic as she tells him about the thing he should have known about when he got there. Mm -hmm. She tells Stabler how there are more brothels than churches in the Czech border towns. The prices are mm -hmm. low, which is what draws people from Germany. Like 10,000 Germans come over every week for the sex workers because mm -hmm. they're half price. Yeah. So she's pointing out the curtains in the windows of these places. She mm -hmm. points at a pink one and says for $17 US, someone can have access to a child under 10 for 30 minutes. And then she points at another place and is like, see those blue curtains? That tells you that you can get a boy child. Mm -hmm. The brothels usually get orphans from Bulgaria and Romania. Stabler's super upset that Europol and the Czech police haven't taken action the way that SVU does. He's like, in my line of work, we don't just sit back and take it. I'm like, save your fucking God complex for Huang, buddy. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. she's sitting there going, we're doing everything we fucking can. Again, and that's when Cabot dips in on her parachute. She pops mm -hmm. her head out of a manhole and is like, you guys, we have to follow the law in all the countries. Mm -hmm. They're doing what they can. Kate also explains to him that Europol and Interpol have like no authority over Czech citizens. Yeah. And the police make too much money on the tourists that are coming in. So they have no incentive to like do their fucking job. Right. You know, and he's like, that's bullshit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Kate gets a phone call, hangs up immediately. They have the same phone schedule as they do here, SVU. <laughs> <laughs> and says, okay, I've got a tip. We got to go to this place. It's not far. It's two U.S. blocks away. <laughs> okay, so now we're in the market square. Kate Stabler and the Czech police meet with a man who says he saw Mia. He's a chocolate vendor. So he says that Mia comes by every day and buys chocolates from him, but she hasn't stopped by yet. Usually she's alone, but sometimes there's a guy with her. The vendor knows that this isn't Mia's dad because of the way he kisses her, which is fucking gross. So Kate decides that they're going to wait for Mia to come and get chocolate. <laughs> Stabler is like drinking a cup of coffee at a table standing while he's looking at the crowd. He looks like an NYPD cop drinking coffee. <laughs> Yeah, he's got a teeny tiny espresso. And yeah, he's like, this is how we do it in the States, <laughs> right? So he sees Mia and every single fucking cop in this whole fucking scene looks so suspicious. It's actually disgusting. The Czech police yeah. look like the dudes that were on chaperone detail for Rocky in Russia in Rocky IV. Oh, God. It's uncanny. So Mia's kind of walking around the market and she's sort of avoiding the police when she sees them. Mm -hmm. And she obviously clocks how suspicious everything and goes up to fucking fantastic and she's like we gotta go then fucking stabler does that fucking <laughs> thing that i hate yes he goes mia <laughs> he yells right after she goes to tessa he goes i think somebody's following me stabler's like i need to confirm that mia <laughs> and it's busy as fuck too this is the same thing with that fucking she's rave. avoiding you dude yeah like, it's, it's, <laughs> it's like don't fucking call out what are you doing oh my god so of course they start running Yep. Stabler chases Mia and Tassik to the streets. He m nightmarishly and unnecessarily runs through a leaf pile sized flock of fucking pigeons. <laughs> and they, the camera was down by his feet too and just showed all these. <laughs> they're like, this is Prague. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't right? want to go there anymore. <laughs> Stabler fucking catches up with them. Tassik like lets go of Mia and runs off in a different direction. Mm -hmm. So Stabler's able to fucking grab Mia. Kate catches up to them. Tassik like kind of stops and look, looks back and then runs a little bit more around a corner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's like, where's Tassik? And he's like, he's nowhere in sight. I'm like, literally, he just went around the corner. Like you could try. Go you check around, go around the, corner. the corner and see. <laughs> yeah. 
you know. So now we're at the embassy and Kate is fucking pissed at Stabler for choosing to get Mia over fucking getting Tassig. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I made the choice. I thought she was more important. He's so pissed that Kate doesn't 100% support him like women are supposed to. I'm like, yeah. Stabes, you literally just learned the basics of the child sex trade 30 minutes ago. But sure, mm-hmm. you made a choice. Sure, bud. Kate's like, dude, you should have gotten Tassic first and then we would have eventually found Mia. Now he has no fucking reason to stay in the Czech Republic. He's probably going to leave the country now that they have Mia. Kate and Stabler are arguing. And then Kate's like, what about the other fucking girl you're looking for? Have you fucking forgot about her? Stabler swaggers by Kate because he's like, I'm just going to go get the info I need from Mia to find her. And Kate's like, oh, my mm-hmm. God, she's been groomed, you fucking chode hole. She thinks we're the enemy. <laughs> like, what are you mm-hmm. trying to do? And then Stabler's like, you know what? <laughs> you're right. It is easier to get the bad guy than deal with the victim. And she's like, oh. So now we're still in the embassy. Stabler and Kate are speaking with Mia. Mia goes on to be a reoccurring character in the show Entourage. Yeah, so Mia's pissed. She doesn't know why she can't leave, which is stupid. She's like, I don't fucking need to be protected. Eric did that. Tasek did that. Just then, Stabler takes a loud gulp swig out of a chalice. It looks like wine, but I'm like, why would he be drinking wine? Is he when in roaming? He's in the middle of his workday. Is that what Czech orange juice looks like? (laughs) (laughs) Mia is telling them that Tassig and her are in love. And she like totally does not believe the bullshit that Tassig's a trafficker. They're like, dude, he doesn't love you. Mm-hmm. He left you behind. And then Kate tells Mia that they know about the photos and how Tassig made her take drugs. And then she like lifts up her arm and sees like some injection. Mm-hmm. Like track marks, yeah. Yeah, and then fucking Mia gets upset. And so Sabler's like, so you wanted to do the drugs and you wanted to take those pictures? And she's like, stop. She yells at him to stop. And he's like, so you wanted the pictures on the internet? And she's like, whoa, 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 what? Mm-hmm. Kate and Stabler were like, dude, this is how we found you from the pics online. At first she just doesn't believe it. And then she's finally kind of understanding how shitty Tassig is. Mm-hmm. And Stabler's like, dude, he's a liar and a manipulator. He won't protect you, so you shouldn't protect him. And Mia's like worried about people seeing the photos of her online. And they're like, if we find out where he is, we can find out where the pics were sent from. Maybe we can like get them deleted when you, you know you can't. But yeah, we can destroy yeah. them and we promise you we will. And I'm like, mm. I mean, the internet's yeah. forever unless you're blippy. Yeah. She tells them where Tassic works. So there's a fucking police raid. They kick open the door. Fucking Tassic is sleeping on a couch. It's some kind of basement fucking whatever. Mm-hmm. The police grab him. He looks at Stabler and goes, Americans? He was like Frenchy mm-hmm. and German. Yeah, it was weird. It was a weird accent. You are arresting people all across the globe these days. And I'm like, oh my God, I know your face. It is the creepy professor from season one. Rousseau, the guy who raped the student that he stalked after she fell down the stairs and died. Remember where he's like, oh my I God. took her to the garden and made love to her. So like that made sense to me why he, because he was French in that episode. He's just That's like a right. French guy doing a German accent. Um, and he also comes back in 2014. Yeah, he's like a pleasant benefit of terrorism good job uh yeah that was good. yeah it was good frenchy he's supposed to be he's, german but he's not good at it either you are arresting arresting people across the globe these days i can't do it these days see that's that's these the part days. that i was like is it german the globe these days a pleasant ben- i can't I, I, it was a fluke the cops dragged tassic away to get interviewed at the precinct mm-hmm. i love when they fucking bust in though because kate just like gets in his face and she's like it's me <laughs> you know yeah she doesn't say anything she just looks at him and shakes her head and steps to the side and stabler's like i'm american yeah they find a different room and this is obviously where tassic takes the photos of the girls they get in the room by stabler unnecessarily just fucking kicking, kicking the door open. Yeah. there's a camera and light surrounding an old mattress on the floor or, like, can you just, why does it have to be an old mattress? Like, can't you just get some sheets? And there's it's no, fucking that, gross. That's what I said. I was like, it's so much creepier because the mattress doesn't have a sheet on it. Yeah. Then they find a fucking shelf with a shit ton of tapes. There's a desk with computers where he runs his, quote, business from. Mm. The tapes are packed to be mailed out all over the fucking U.S. Yeah. And Staves is like, business is booming. Gross. Mm-hmm. Now they're in this Czech jail fucking interrogation room and Kate and Stabler have Tassig sitting at a table. There's a guard in the background and whatever. Tassig's like, I haven't done anything wrong because the age of consent in the Czech Republic is 15. I don't know. Uh, (laughs) And they're like, well, Mia's 14. So there's that. And we also have video of you raping her. 
And he's like, that is consensual because she loves me. None of this sounds good. You're like, I don't want to do the accents because they're not good. I'm like, I'll do it. Worse. Do it. <laughs> do it. Stabler plops down proof in front of Tassig that Mia was also raped by two other men. And Tassig says she's an adventurous woman. Ugh. Tassig was found. Stabler hates that. He hates it. I hate that he even called her a woman. Ugh. Yeah. And he like gets up close to his ear. Oh, you know? Yeah, it's so good. Oh, she's a 14 year old girl. She's a 14 year old girl. They found 100,000 images Ugh. in Tassig's possession of child sex abuse. And Tassig, T- oh he's God. such a piece of shit. Newsflash, everybody. I don't like this guy. Yeah. He's like, I'm trying to trap the people who buy them from me. I'm doing your work. He's like, why are you so obsessed with children? It's like, um, I'm sorry. Why are you so obsessed with children? Yeah. Ew. I just don't like, he's trying to gaslight them. And that made me mad. Mm -hmm. And Kate's like, if that's the case, why did you arrange to kidnap a child from America? And he says, Mia came to me by her own choice, but I don't expect you to understand. Ooh, and then you see Stabler in the background. He's like rolling up oh, the sleeves. Oh, like, he Fuck. is rolling up those little old Something, sleeves and goes, Something's happening. Oh, I understand. And I'm like, he wants mm-hmm. a piece of this turd and I want to watch it. <laughs> Stabler shows Tassig a photo of the unidentified little girl and asks him who she is. They found 50 images of her on Tassig's computer. And he's like, fucking gross. I don't know her. And Kate's like, did you photograph her? And he's like, no, I am not a deviant. All of a sudden, fucking <laughs> Stabler elbows him in the face, <laughs> knocking him backwards in the chair. Tasig tries to say, I'm supposed to be afraid that the American detective will hurt me. You can't. It's against your laws. And Kate goes, Aber, wir sind nicht in America, Herr Tasig, and motioned for the guard to leave. I was a terrible German student in high school, but I clocked this shit. She just opened a big old can of Stabler worms, <laughs> sandbag flavored. <laughs> Kate goes on. <laughs> Maybe he'll be more inclined to cooperate and stop this ridiculous performance. Tassig looks at Stabes and he's like, you need permission from this bitch? Stabler fucking throat punches Tassig, picks him up by uh-huh. the shirt, damn near to the ceiling and body slams him onto the table. He picked him up like dads pick up babies when they're going to toss them, <laughs> you know, in the air. Yeah. Like It was bananas. And then body slammed him like he's in the goddamn WWE. And he goes, what'd you say to me? Huh? This little girl? He fucking what do I need? morphs into Batman. Who is she? Pfft, hits him. Tassig. I don't know her. Pfft, hits him again. I swear. But I've seen a website. It has pictures and video of this girl. It says her name is Amy. That is all I know. I swear. Pfft. Stabler's panting like I just walked up that flight of stairs at the embassy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Also, what Kate said was that he's not in America or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. The Because Stabler was like, what did you just say? And I mean, it's ob- like she translates. She's like, basically, yeah. I just told him that we're not in America. Your laws do not mm-hmm. apply here. Mm-hmm. I'm sweaty now. <laughs> <laughs> I get, I'm like, back at the embassy, this computer dude is telling Stabler and Kate that the site Tassic was referring to is called, quote, <sighs> Amy's Little Secret. Mm. It's password protected. For twenty nine ninety nine a month, you get charged from a separate site that issues the passwords, and then you can look at multiple sites once you have it. When the charges show up on your credit card statement, it looks like they came from a fly fishing magazine. This guy's like, I took the embassy's Amex and I already got the password and everything. He has access to hundreds of fucking images of, of Amy from age three to nine with live webcasts twice a week Mm -hmm. they linked nick too shy to the website tastic's computers were sent to the custom cyber smuggling unit in dc the company that runs the website that issues the passwords for the child sex images is located in nyc stabler's gotta go home back to the states then stabler punches Mm -hmm. this guy in the face before he leaves because he can't do that at home (laughs) back at the precinct Stabler walks in and Bishop is waiting at his desk. They wrap up the info about Mia. She was taken home. She's going to need a lot of support and counseling and shit. Yeah, she's not happy about being home, but hopefully Mm -hmm. after therapy and stuff, she will be. Bishop is there to take Stabler to the federal building. And he's like, why? And he's like, you won't believe what you started. I hate Bishop so much. (laughs) In the federal building, Bishop and Stabler go over the report from Customs with Claudia. The federal pornography task force is there, so there's a shit ton of cops and the phones are going off, Mm -hmm. all because of catching Tassig. The company that issues the passcodes is called, quote, Private Code, which was traced to a house 
in New York City. Apparently, Tasik gets a cut of the password sales up to twenty five thousand a month, uh-huh. and he can't afford a sheet. Uh, like, <laughs> it's fucked up, dude. Oh. The company Private Code has fifteen websites dedicated to child sexual abuse material. The websites are in three countries, and over four hundred fucking thousand images are housed on the sites with who knows how many subscribers. Claudia says that they're busting seventeen producers in the tri-state area alone right now, and she said, "You've opened." Pandora's box. <laughs> There's the title. There it is. He's all pumped and he's like, oh, looks like you got him. And Claudia's like, hell yeah, bro. Want to come? And he's like, I already am. <laughs> it's funny that you wrote, I wrote, I wrote Stabler's pumped. <laughs> he's like, looks like you got a cover. And she's like, we do. Just like you want to be there to take the bastards out. I already am. That's better. <laughs> Fucking boom, door kick. It's a multi-agency raid of the residents of the private code operator business. Stabler and the others enter a room where two middle-aged white people, that note of Alyssa's, Alyssa wrote that sentence. She wrote, I know. Stabler and others enter a room where two middle-aged white people are at a desk going through paperwork. That made me fucking laugh because the way she specified two middle-aged white people, two missionary position, no seasoning on their food ass white people, raisins in their salads, suits watching ass white people. <laughs> fucking I mean the woman had on a pearl necklace like they were right she was very right to be like yeah this is this describes exactly who we're looking at yeah while the couple's being arrested the woman's like oh, we only sell passwords we don't know what people do on their websites Ugh. and Stabes goes you don't know what the website child dot rapes all about shut up I love the way he said it. he said it so satisfying he was like shut up he said it the way cabot said it a few episodes ago remember oh yeah yeah Yeah. shut up later at the house taru rubin's there oh i called him (laughs) to rubin to rubin that's that's it that's a good rubin. that's what it was yeah to rubin or not to (laughs) rubin always to rubin i'm going to arby's after this i gotta get a rubin yeah Oh my God, should we get Rubens after this? Yeah. He's with others searching through the multiple computers that these people were working out of. He's pumped because these pieces of 70 SPF sunscreen shit kept immaculate and (laughs) thorough records. Yeah, and it's way bigger than they originally thought. Oh yeah. The company grossed $15 million just this past year. 300,000 subscribers, over 100,000 sites in 29 countries. 60 of the subscribers are in New York city ruben's like you guys are gonna be busy Ugh. they search nick too shy and find credit card info that could lead them to him stabler's basically resting his head on to ruben's shoulder and says print that out <laughs> at nick too shy's residence stabler and bishop get up to the apartment knock and amy the little girl from the website answers and this is where the fucking violins get to shine it's a very emotional and drawn out scene Mm -hmm. amy says her dad is upstairs sleeping and they convince amy that they're cops so that she'll let them in the thing that i was annoyed by i get it like it's emotional and she's like where's your policeman outfit and sailor's like here's my badge and bishop's like i can have a moment too here's my badge they didn't have to do any of that because there was literally a uniformed cop who came in behind them (laughs) I said that. I said, why? Later on, I said, why didn't they just have that guy show her his cop clothes? Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I'm I'm wearing the full uniform. They're like, but you're not important. We are. (laughs) Again, emotionally speaking, going back, Stabler is welling up with tears in Mm -hmm. interacting with this little girl. Yeah. He like gets down on his knees to show her a badge and you could see the Mm. tears like he's trying not to cry. Yeah. Because we were not expecting for her to answer the door. No. Like none of us were. Mm -hmm. So Bishop stays back with Amy while Stabler goes up to find Amy's dad. He does. Mm -hmm. This piece of shit is asleep on some kind of like cot or couch or. It's crazy too because they show an up close of his hand. Because normally, like, cops and stuff are supposed to rest their trigger finger on the gun, not the trigger. Mm -hmm. You know, unless they're going to be, like, shooting somebody and you show him do that. And you're like, "Uh uh-oh. While he's going up the stairs. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I just killed a dude, like, two weeks ago, buddy. So. Yeah. The guy's asleep and Stabes puts the gun to his head for, like, a minute. And he takes a... Sh- you can really... You see him, like, wrestle with... I'm gonna fucking... I'm just gonna shoot this yeah. guy. Yeah. And then, and then you see him actually kind of shudder. He's like... <sighs> yeah, he takes... He, a- he, like, shudders out of it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And takes this shaky breath before he kicks the... Whatever this guy was laying on. It was a cot or a shitty low-to-the-ground couch. I don't know. He set up and it was like a... It was weird. It was just a line of boxes that were folded up with a sheet over the top of it. <laughs> and this guy jumps up and he's like, where's my daughter? And Staves holds the gun in his face and goes... 
goes, where's your daughter? Like, you give a damn. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. P.S. This guy was an Oz. But, oh. I thought he looked familiar. Yeah. yeah. Stabler throws some clothes at him and fucking waits while he gets dressed, holding him at gunpoint the entire time. Mm -hmm. In the precinct, we're in an interrogation room. Bishop's there, Stabler's there, Nick Tushai and his fucking lawyer. They tell his lawyer that Nick's prints were found at both murder scenes. I love this fucking lawyer. Mm -hmm. He's doing a lot of handwork. And he's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, enough of these games. Let's get Cabot in here and talk a deal. And Stabler's furious. And he's like, you think you can get a deal on two murders and prolonged child abuse? Good luck. And it's not going to make a fucking difference once the feds get to you. Mm -hmm. And then Nick's like, I didn't abuse my daughter. And Stabler's like, ah, oh, <laughs> yeah, you fucking did. Since she could walk. Oh. And then Nick says, so you say. And Bishop's like, that's what your fucking websites say, genius. And Sailor said, that's why you killed the McGraths, right? She knew what you were doing and you had to protect your secret. And then Nick's like, uh, no, she misrepresented herself. Mm -hmm. And then Bishop's like, yeah, pretending to be as disgusting as you. And Nick says, she betrayed me. And Sailor says, you fucking betrayed your daughter. This is insane. I would, I would be losing my fucking mind in a conversation like this. Yeah. Nick says, I didn't. I love Amy more than you'll ever realize. And I'm not going to feel bad just because you're telling me I should. And Nick's lawyer's like, okay, okay, this is, uh, shut up. Yeah. That's enough. This interview is over, detectives. But Nick keeps fucking going because he's an idiot. And he says, society says I'm wrong, but not long ago, society said interracial marriage was wrong too. Oh my God. Mm. This fucking argument, it just infuriates me. Not long ago, society executed homosexuals. Stabler stops him and says to Bishop, oh, you hear that? That's a classic. A pedophile's justification for why he's not the pervert we know he is. Mm -hmm. Nick starts up again and he's like, I used to think I was alone. I'm not. There are hundreds of thousands of people just like me, maybe millions. Mm -hmm. And B Bishop says, all your buddies on the internet, you're right. You fucking freaks will never be alone in prison. Then Nick says, you think that maybe you're the minority? Ever think that you're the freaks? Go ahead, arrest us, persecute us. We're not going away. We're not going to play by your rules and nothing you can do will ever change that. Stabler and Bishop are quiet because they know he's right. Yeah. And then I'm like, do we need to fucking explain the difference between between consent and abuse like mm. a child cannot consent a child cannot consent that's it i don't care about what comes after that it's nothing it's it's fucking i mean the whole argument that he gave was just the nambla bullshit of you know mm -hmm. dragging the lgbtqia plus community into it who have made very clear that they don't want any part of this shit like as a collective community bringing up interracial marriage like all the things that you're describing and talking about are things based in consent mm -hmm. what you're talking about does not have consent therefore it's abuse yeah so now we're at a bar. Bishop wants to buy another round of half beers, but <laughs> Stabler has to go home to see his kids because it's been, I don't know, what, three weeks, two months, five years? Who knows? Yeah. Like, Jesus. <laughs> Bishop's like, why are you a fucking SVU detective? Mm. Is part of it like your kids, like protecting your kids and stopping all those bad guys and other kids from being hurt? It's a tough gig. You really got to love it. And then takes a swig of his beer and he has this look on his face like, was that a weird thing to say? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I was like, yes. <laughs> and then Stabler says, no. You really got to hate it. That's the only way you'll be any good at it. Mm. Stabler pats Bishop on the shoulder and walks out of the bar, and that's the end. Oof. All right. So, unfortunately, there is an insane amount of shit on this topic, and this episode pulled from a couple of major operations. I chose one, but they're all terrible. Here we go. Okay. In March of 1996, in the small rural town of Greenfield, California, a gaggle of little girls were having a sleepover. The host's dad, Ronald Riva, some articles said Rivera, but most things I read said Riva, was there to chaperone. The next day, two of the little girls, sisters six and eight, that were at the sleepover told their mom that Riva had been physically inappropriate with them. One admitted it had actually gone on for a year in her case. Mom reported it to the police immediately immediately and Riva was under arrest. Riva's wife began calling other parents to inform them of the arrest and to encourage them to talk to their own daughters. Wait, so Riva's wife was like Yeah, Riva's wife, yes, Riva's wife with... called the the parents of the other little girls that were at the sleepover to let them know that he had been arrested for this and to please talk to your kids. So she wasn't like trying to protect her husband or anything. Uh from what I the things that I read it did not seem that way. Cool. One of the girls, a 10-year-old little girl, and of course all the kids are anonymous, told her mom about the last two years of her life with Ronald Riva. He had begun grooming her at eight years old. The abuse 
escalated and she was regularly raped by him. This family also went to the local police. With the case getting bigger than they could handle, they had already had three reports against the same dude. It was passed on to the Monterey County Sheriff's Department. A detail that sent this into a different direction was this. On the night of the sleepover, Riva came into his daughter's bedroom to wake up her 10-year-old friend. He took her into a separate room where another man was waiting, 54-year-old Melton Lee Myers. The two men then raped her in front of a webcam. When police and FBI got into the computer, they found an insane amount of child sex abuse images as well as transcripts from chat rooms. Riva had programmed his computer to keep all of the conversations from these chat rooms. Okay, earlier that year, Riva had created an invite-only chat room called the Orchid Club. You couldn't join unless you were recommended by a member and then the other members had to vote you in to give you access to the entry password. It was for pedophiles to chat, normalize their fucking sickness, and exchange abuse material. Our 10-year-old Jane Doe's assault by Riva and Myers was live streamed to the Orchid Club members. Others watched while this happened and requested things that they then did to this little girl. Oh Riva gave police access to the Orchid Club to take down the other 16 members because they're like, listen, work with us and save your ass. And he's like, I'm a piece of shit and I know all these other pieces of shit. So yeah, you can have them. Through IP addresses, they found that 11 of the members were in the US and the rest were found in Canada, Australia, and Finland. The other rapist, Melton Lee Myers, had previously served time for two other charges of child molestation. He had served 60 days and wasn't registered as a sex offender in his own community. 60 days? Is that what you said? He served 60 days for child molestation. Police found photos in his home of kids in his area between the ages of 2 and 12. There was also a video of a live Orchid Club meeting of five pedophiles openly discussing their crimes. All 16 of these members were charged with conspiracy to possess and distribute child sex abuse images. In total between them, there were 50,000 images. Oh my fucking God. Riva and Myers and four others were also charged with joining and abetting in the exploitation of a minor. Five victims came forward about Riva and he was looking at the possibility of life in prison. He pled guilty for some of the federal charges in exchange for a 30-year sentence, but pled not guilty for state charges of child molestation. Melton and pled guilty on five counts of child molestation. Riva was found guilty on the state charges that he wanted to be found not guilty for, and Judge Robert Moody added 125 mm-hmm. years to his sentence for that. Melton was on his third strike of California's three strikes rule. Are you familiar with California's three strikes rule? Mm-hmm. Third yeah. strike for the yeah. same offense. So his sentence would be exponentially harsher. He was sentenced to over 300 years. Good. Every other American Orchid Club member received sentences as well, but nothing close to what the two men in California got. Some got as little as 12 months. So investigators combed through every part of the Orchid Club chat room and found another pattern. Many of the members of the Orchid Club were also affiliated with another chat room that was still very active. It was called Wonderland. Oh my God. They wanted to get in there, so they had to bust another one of these little fucks. They found a Mm. member who was closely connected to Riva living in Hastings, England. The house was across the street from a school. In it lived computer consultant Ian Baldock. Okay. In October of 1997, police raided his house and found 42,000 images of child sex abuse. Getting into the chat room was set up to be a multi-step process as a means of protecting themselves. Okay, Mm -hmm. this is Wonderland. So Wonderland was a fortress of firewalls and fucking... Fortress of pukitude? Yeah, but like very much protected, encrypted, computer genius shit was going on. Mm -hmm. So getting into the chat room was set up to be a multi-step process so that they could protect themselves. All chats were encrypted and it took experts five months to access some of the basic information of the group. They found that there were three main users who did all of the screening of new members before the group would vote on their entry. Sometimes they would meet them in person. It took a lot to get into this group. And then once you were in the group, you had to be like trained in this computer whatever to be able to gain access regularly. It's not like you just got a password. Yeah. Another requirement is that you had to share 10,000 new images of child sex abuse as payment for entry. Whoa. The kids had to be under 13 years old to be included in this requirement. The rules were different if you were producing your own child sex abuse images and or video. They considered it a special interest and considered your entry outside of these rules. So if you were filming raping kids and shit, you had leeway on the 10,000 images. (sighs) 
So they had to get a hold of these three fucks, these three who were orchestrating the whole thing. I mean, everybody in mm-hmm. there is a piece of shit, but they're like, we need right. to nip it at the top, right? Mm-hmm. In the meantime, elsewhere in England, Gary Salt was under arrest for molesting a friend of his daughter. At his house, police found a noose, which was his escape plan, but he's in police custody, Jeez. so... Forensic computer experts found over 20,000 images of child sex abuse on his computer, including homemade content featuring himself. They also found that he was actually one of the three main members orchestrating the Wonderland community. Hmm. This was like, look at this guy we got. Yeah. He considered himself to be the club's chairman. And when they confronted him with this, he immediately agreed to cooperate. Mm Mm-hmm. So after cooperating and pleading guilty to rape, indecent assault, and gross indecency, he got 12 years. Doesn't seem like enough. Back to him in a moment. So we're just going to put a pin in him for a second. They had to make a deal with this guy, okay? Because the CIA said that if they didn't have him, it would have taken 400 investigators 44 years to get through the layers of encryption to access this group. Whoa. It's bananas. I mean, they had experts. They had some of the top computer encryption experts. They had software running nonstop for a month, not being able to get through anything. Like, it just... How did they fucking... Who are these guys? Were they like... Okay. Whatever. Yeah, I, I mean, how, how do they know how to do all that stuff? Well, they had a, they had a pretty strong incentive to learn how to really protect themselves on the internet. Right. Some of the best people who did that apparently were also fucking child abusers. So, hmm. in going through everything in the club, investigators believed that Wonderland had been in operation for about five years. The traffic was constant, and the images they were sharing were horrific. Detective Inspector Alex Wood said, "Quote: These images stay with you. The most horrific scenes." of abuse and they recorded sounds terrible terrible sounds oh god the top dudes including gary salt were making their own content to share like i had said so they were making video of abusing kids for the purpose of sharing in this group members of this group this is so fucked up there were members of this group that had traveled to gary salt's house to meet the kids that he was abusing like legit getting photos of them like they were going to a fucking meet and greet sitting next to these kids like they're meeting a fucking movie star in these photos and then sharing with other members on the group like i met this person like this is a kid who is being sexually abused it's it's the mentality is so fucking insane yeah in april of 1998 the british national crime squad took over the investigation and it became operation cathedral they collected a ton of information that would otherwise be almost impossible to access from salt's computer and sent investigators to surveil suspects all over the country gavin seegers was a particularly depraved member who talked in the group about his fantasies to abduct abuse and kill children IRL, he was a voluntary youth leader at a local Sea Cadets headquarters in Dartforth. What in the fuck, Mm -hmm. dude? What in the actual fuck? Yeah, so they're running this investigation and they're they're surveilling all of these people. They kept a super close watch on him because one, they were afraid to make a move. You know, they're like, we need to arrest this guy right away. He's fucking dangerous. But they were like, if his arrest gets out to the rest of the group, it could compromise a mass arrest, which is what they were hoping to get to. Yeah. So they just heavily surveilled him and they had stipulations, you know, they were like, if he's alone in a room with a kid, like they're watching him all the time. If we see him alone with his work, or whatever like arrest him immediately like don't even fuck around with it so many of these people also in this group as they began to like uncover the real people and not just their fucking dorky ass screen names these people were husbands fathers they had great jobs many of them were pillars of their community they're hiding in plain sight behind what the rest of us would be disarmed by yeah this is fucking why this is exactly why my kids will never do sleepovers Mm-hmm. I'm not comfortable with it and I know that people would take it I would never take it personally if somebody who was even extremely close to me was like I don't let my kids do sleepovers I understand I know it's not personal I know it doesn't have to do with me or John you don't know us at the end of the day you don't fucking know us and, and it, people are always like more likely abused by somebody that they know mm-hmm. that's how I mean we all know that like mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and this mom um, from the the little girl the 10 year old at the beginning of the story she spoke a lot after this about like you guys need to be aware that it's not just neglected kids that are looking for love that get abused mm-hmm. you know she's like we're your average family 
you know, Mm -hmm. and she spent a lot of time with this family. Anyway, so this was the largest internet pedophile ring to date. 197 members were identified to be operating out of 18 countries. Moving forward, the team decided to get as many countries on board as possible to arrest as many of these guys as possible, which was a mountain in itself. In the meantime, a U.S. team was separately assembled called Operation Cheshire Cat to focus on American members of Wonderland. Just a few months in, the British National Crime Squad, under the umbrella of Interpol, held a meeting in Lyon, France, with the 18 countries. In the end, they had 14 participating in the operation. Now, they're collecting information. They're surveilling people. There was beginning to be a concern that they need to take action. They need to start making arrests because they're putting kids in danger by waiting too long. And they were also starting to notice that some members of Wonderland were beginning to behave with a lot more caution. Like, they were encrypting things more heavily uh, when they shared them. They were giving updates about, you know, police inquiry stuff with each other in the group. And they're like, we need to take action because this is gonna get away from us right yeah they decided that it was time to make all the arrests that they could because of the immediate nature of the internet agencies had to make sure that this all went down across the globe simultaneously like if one member was hit slightly early they could tip off all the others possibly destroying crucial evidence so on september 2nd 1998 at the exact same time i mean the exact second about 1500 police and child protection agents in 12 countries arrested 40 wonderland members this was the Mm -hmm largest ever seizure of child sex abuse images. Some of it was too encrypted to be able to decode, but what they did uncover was over 750,000 images and 1,800 videos of some of the worst abuse that you can imagine. They estimated that if they were able to access all of it, the number is actually over 2 million. The youngest victim that they found was three months old. No. Dude, These are uh, some of the sickest people in the underbelly of existence, you know? How do you... Okay. I don't even... I know. Investigators put those images to use, okay? Analyzing them, using them to try and identify missing kids. Out of all of the images they obtained in the raids, 1,263 kids have been placed into a database in an attempt to identify them. Detective Chief Inspector Alex Wood said something that is so clearly the obvious thought, but really sickening to hear. He said, quote, For me, the worst images were the ones showing the expression on the child's face and not necessarily what's happening to them. I can't help but think of the damage that's been done. Following the arrests, seven Wonderland members died by suicide. Going to trial took years, and many law enforcement officials were psychologically affected, obviously. Many retired. Over the 200 identified members, only a small fraction were actually arrested, and of those, only half faced trials. Seven in the UK pled to conspiracy to distribute indecent images of children, and on February 13th, 2001, they were sentenced by Judge Kenneth McRae. The maximum sentence based in British law was three years. But because they pled guilty, their actual sentences ranged from one year to two and a half. Jesus fucking Christ. Two of them would be registered sex offenders for life, but five of them were placed on the sex offender registry for only seven years. The public and child protection charities fucking lost it. Yeah. Dr. Michelle Elliott, director for Kidscape, one of these charities, said that when she learned about the sentencing in this case, quote, you would get a longer sentence accumulating masses of parking tickets or burglary. I am absolutely stupefied by this leniency. It sends a clear message that these crimes are not being taken seriously. Mm -hmm. They've since made the max for that particular offense 10 years in the UK. Still not enough, in my opinion. The men that were arrested in the UK have all since been released, and many of them changed their names and have reoffended. Gary Salt, remember I was telling you about him, the one who got 12 years, mm-hmm. was released in 2010 after serving his 12 years and continued to offend. He was ultimately caught with more material that he was obtaining from the computer section at the Old Tafford Library near the children's book section. Overall, with that, he had 25 charges brought against him. Greater Manchester Police Detective Constable Barry Conway said, quote, Andrews is a convicted convicted sex offender who has shown no desire to rehabilitate. Despite serving his full prison sentence, it did not take long for him to amass 
amass a vast catalog of indecent images, including ones that show him carrying out appalling abuse. He has some sort of perverse status among other sex offenders, and in the sickening circles in which he moves is something he clearly relishes. Every indecent image recovered tells a story of harrowing abuse, and we are dedicated to identifying and bringing to justice everyone involved in such offending, whether it is for the sharing of images or the abuse itself. So the last time Salt went before a judge on all these charges, Judge Peter Lakin said to him, quote, you are clearly a committed and very active pedophile who is not willing or able to address your distorted behavior. He is now imprisoned indefinitely. Good, good. Only 17 of the 1,263 kids they placed in the database have been positively identified. Mm. How and do then, I not know about this? And the more, <laughs> you said that, it, and the more, the like I kept looking at articles because like I had to kind of dig for this um, to find names and everything. And I just kept coming across more things like this. Just in 2018, Operation Broken Heart uh, arrested 2,300 people in the U.S., Wow. There was one called Candyman. There was one called Artist, one called Twin Odysseus. In another big one, Operation Landmark, 130 pedophiles from 19 countries were arrested. It's just, that's the end. <laughs> they just don't, it, it just doesn't stop. Yeah, fuck, man. Oh, I don't even want to, oh, okay, let's move on. Okay, we're done. Yeah, let's be done. But like, honestly, just kill yourself. Just do it. Just kill yourself. Sorry, you got the fucking bad shake. Is this eugenics? Is that what I'm talking about? Fucking kill yourself. <laughs> Jesus. I don't think so. Next week, we got season four, episode 16, Tortured. Oh Benson's God. Dave's look for a murderer with a foot fetish there. That's that's all I'm going to say about it. Uh, okay. You know what? <laughs> if it's not kid feet, I don't, I, that's, I can handle it. I can handle it. That okay. was brutal. I can't wait to talk about foot fetishes. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Thanks a lot. Email us at svupod at gmail.com. Send us your ghost stories or whatever. Follow us on Instagram at svupod. PO Box 176, DeForest, Wisconsin, 53532. Send me a present if you didn't for my birthday. I know it's <laughs> July, but let's check out our website, svupod.com. Join our Patreon, dude, so you can hear all the extra fun shit and rabbit holes we go down on. Come watch us go down on it. <laughs> <laughs> on our only fans i mean patreon <laughs> <laughs> throw us a couple stars man i mean i prefer five at a time pew, but pew, pew, pew. one two three four five pew, pew. hashtag little bit loud to support indie podcasting small pods little pods loving pods together okay love you bye love you bye, bye. and that's when he's like it's easier <laughs> I'm just, I wish I had that on, <laughs> on tape with your fucking tongue. You're like, no. Craigler. Craigler. <laughs> Craigler Rock. Cra Craigler, <laughs> I have to wait in line for hours if I want to get a Craigler on a Sunday morning. <laughs> it's worth okay. it, though. It's worth it. <laughs> it's worth it. They're so good. And to our Elite Squad patrons, Haley K, Sonia W, Jenny S, Sky K, Marissa M, Elky H, Annie G, Mary D, Andrew. Andrew. Rebecca D, Miranda B, Shelby W, Lex, Emily T, Kayla W, Mallory G, Bonita R, Marin, Vanessa, Amy P, Jess M, Summer M, Melanie G, Courtney W, Ursula S, Emily A, Kate H, Uyanga, Nicole R, Julia P, Sapphire, Kayla, Allison B, Catherine M, Kate P, Jessica S, Nicole M, Acacia B, Daniel W, Kelsey D, Jana M, Joshua H, Tammy J, Bear, Bear Crystal, Lucy M, Trisha S, Sam D, Laura D, Laura I, Sarah, Emily A, and Angela D. Get that D. Uh, All y'all love you guys. Thanks love for you. fucking Preach. joining and helping us to be able to do what we do what we love to do for you and us and friends and we love you okay your support means the world oh my <laughs> god <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know where right. it was started but i hated where it ended up all right i love you bye i love you bye <laughs> <laughs>